Hi there everyone and welcome to CPC's online devotional for Tuesday, September 15. As always, I hope that your week has, is off to a good start. I hope that you are well and thank you for tuning in for this online time together today. I have previously shared with you thoughts from Henry Nouwen. Henry Nouwen was a Dutch Catholic priest, professor, writer, and theologian. He died in 1996, and today I want to draw on him again. Nouwen wrote many books, and one of the books he wrote was a little book called The Return of the Prodigal Son. And in one place in this book, he describes what he calls his resistance to living a joyful life. Resistance to living a joyful life. Well, given all that's going on in the world around us these days, I think Nowen's words are especially relevant at this time. So here's a portion of what he says about resistance to living a joyful life. Listen now to what he says. I am not accustomed to rejoicing in things that are small, hidden, and scarcely noticed by the people around me. I am generally ready and prepared to receive bad news, to read about wars, violence, and crimes, and to witness conflict and disarray. I always expect my visitors to talk about their problems and pain, their setbacks and disappointments, their depressions and their anguish. Somehow I have become accustomed to living with sadness and so have lost the eyes to see the joy and the ears to hear the gladness that belongs to God and which is to be found in the hidden corners of the world. I have a friend who is so deeply connected with God that he can see joy where I only expect sadness. He travels much and meets countless peoples. When he returns home, I always expect him to tell me about the difficult economic situation of the countries he visited, about the great injustices he heard about, and the pain he has seen. But even though he is very aware of the great upheavals of the world, he seldom speaks of it. When he shares his experiences, he tells about the hidden joys he has discovered. He tells about a man, a woman, or a child who brought him hope and peace. He tells about little groups of people who are faithful to each other in the midst of all the turmoil. He tells about the small wonders of God. At times, I realize that I am disappointed because I want to hear newspaper news, exciting and exhilarating stories that can be talked about among friends. But he never responds to my need for sensationalism. He keeps saying, I saw something very small and very beautiful, something that gave me much joy. Yes, I know that not everybody has been converted yet, that there is not peace everywhere and that all pain has not been taken away. But still, I see people turning and returning home. I hear voices that pray. I notice moments of forgiveness and I witness many signs of hope. I don't have to wait until all is well, but I can celebrate every little hint of the kingdom that is at hand. such great words and thoughtful words. The idea that no matter what, we can still find a true living sign each and every day that God's kingdom is real, that God is at hand, that hope is alive. It takes discipline. It requires choosing to see light in the midst of darkness, choosing to to find life in the midst of death, choosing to find truth in the midst of confusion. In the days that we live in, it requires discipline indeed. Otherwise, though, our only choice 
is resistance to living a joyful life. For a closing prayer today, I'd like to share a prayer from William Bright. William Bright was an English church historian and Anglican priest. He lived from 1824 to 1901. Let us pray together. Loving God, you want us to give thanks for all things, to fear nothing except losing you, and to lay all our cares on you, knowing that you care for us. Protect us from faithless fears and worldly anxieties, and grant that no clouds in this mortal life may hide from us the light of your immortal love, shown to us in your child, Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thanks again for tuning in and joining me today. I will see you again on Thursday. And until then, God's peace be to all of you. Goodbye.